The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Welcome to another episode of the Cheeky Travelers Podcast, presented to you by The Upshot Project. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> I am one of your co-hosts, Hayden, and with me is my gorgeous partner, Solan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or for people that uh, knows me well, just Sol. Sol works wonderfully well. Exactly. So. Apparently, you're running this show. On, you're running this episode on this time round. Apparently, yes. Apparently. I I actually uh, just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you got for well, me and us today? Yeah. So in today's episode, we are going to talk about moving abroad. And why did we pick this subject? Well, because we both lived abroad in our life. So this episode is going to be part of a two parts. I guess. Yeah, two-ish. Yeah, so today will be about the preparation behind moving abroad. But before we start, um, I have a cheeky question for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know we talked about it before and we didn't want to answer, and you're probably going to hate me for asking you that, but are noodles pasta? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't... <sighs> No! <laughs> oh, they're not? No noodles are not pasta. Why? <laughs> some some pasta can be classified as noodles, like things like spaghetti, linguine and stuff. But... That, 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 that. Wait. For you, spaghetti are noodles? Not really. Oh, I'm, okay. like, I'm, I'm like it's more like people have told me that like all all pasta is noodles and it's totally flipped me. Um so but I can see the similarities in some of the pasta being noodles but no i would not say that noodles are pasta by any stretch of the imagination but what are noodles and what are pasta what different whoa, what? Whoa. <laughs> what is that word I have some more tea what is the difference then between pasta and noodles um, what is the thing that keeps them apart um that's a great question actually now this has gone beyond cheeky um I part of me thinks it's like the uh, the origins like of where each of them came from. So mm -hmm. I am probably wrong in this, but from my the way that I see it, noodles was more or less invented in Asia, and then pasta was very much invented in one place, Italy. Was it? <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's all I got. Um, <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> so I feel like that in itself is like a huge difference, and yeah. the ingredients might be similar but they just you can't like you couldn't put like rice noodles in a, in a as a spaghetti bolognese like you couldn't do it and you couldn't put pasta I mean, in like in like a you... noodle soup like a ramen noodle soup not in my eyes but... true like, I, but I think you should try penne. Like, <laughs> like penne or like a little bow tie ones nah i couldn't put that into like <laughs> raymond ramen Ra raymond oh my raymond. god ramen <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. I mean, you can always leave a comment <laughs> to check if you ever tried to put like rice noodles with spaghetti sauce. No, don't do that. Don't try. I mean, and you call it a spaghetti sauce. Why would you put other stuff than spaghetti? I don't know. Maybe, I mean, you could shake it up and get crazy with linguine. <laughs> Ooh. Which is basically anyway, sexy. Anyway, I think that's a controversy in itself. Yeah. Thank you very much for your cheeky question. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Let's dive right in. So, okay. Just so that people know. So, I've lived in Australia for around two years. And you've lived in Wales for six months. Yeah. But also you've lived in Canada As with my go with my gorgeous self since uh, six yeah. months. 
for real because you've been to Canada for eight months, but it was during COVID, you couldn't work. So it doesn't count. It's basically a part of your existence that didn't exist. <laughs> part of my existence that didn't exist. Exactly. Right. All right. Um, so the first thing before wanting to move abroad is taking the decision yeah. to move abroad, right? And I've done some research and um, I found a website that cites seven main reasons why people decide to move to another country. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking, I'm just going to mention some okay. to you. Well, all of those seven. And let me... <laughs> some or all of them. <laughs> so, it's only seven anyway, so whatever. Uh, and yeah, I guess just discuss about it real quickly before moving on to the next For sure. points, right? So, okay, what do you think a reason is to move abroad? Um, you're just running away from your problems. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> not how it's cited here. But um, for a change of pace, okay, basically. Well, yeah. Yeah. Change of pace. <clears throat> so here it says, perhaps um, our hometown is too crowded or too quiet. A change in scenery can bring about a change in pace which it's do you think that's what you've done when you moved to wales i wouldn't say that uh, like because it's also like a first i don't know like i didn't think that the culture was going to be overly different like i picked the uk at the time because i felt like i got the buzz of traveling overseas but not too much in the culture shock because mm -hmm. i do like particularly, I guess, through things like cricket, I knew yeah. a little bit about the UK. Hmm. So it wasn't so much a change of pace because it felt like it. they were just very similar. Just the weather was going to be terrible. So I had to work on that. Yeah. But yeah. So what was it then? Well, for me, it was, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I did a degree and I was working and I was trying to figure out yeah. what I was going to do with the money that I was earning. And I already knew that I loved, you know, seeing new places, getting mm. new stuff, trying new foods. So for me, it was more like just that sense of adventure, like the idea of trying something of like almost going back to, to basics and trying not to have as much support, but trying to do it independently. That wasn't the initial goal, but I definitely ended up sort of evolving into that mm -hmm. idea of confirming that I can live independently. So for me, it was... Was it more for like a new start than a change of pace? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Like, yeah, no, I, I'd probably agree with that one. Yeah. And that's actually another reason why people want to move abroad. It's just for a fresh start. I guess this one would match more with um, running away from your problems. <laughs> um, I... Like before meeting you, I knew I wanted to go live abroad, either in France or e like even um, Scotland. Yeah, you do have a strong affinity for that place. Yeah, it was just beautiful and whatever. And for me, I think it was, yeah, mostly for a fresh start. I, I didn't know necessarily who I was, I guess, a couple of years ago. And traveling really forced me to take my own decision to be affirmative and to know what I wanted and to know what I didn't want. Yeah. And so traveling gave me that glimpse of what it could be to start a fresh start. Okay. Start a fresh start or to start something new. And so I was like, well, if I move abroad, I can redefine myself completely, not just for two, three weeks, but for a whole six months, one year, mm. and then come back to Canada and just not be another person, but be another version of myself, a 2.0 version mm. of myself. The updated. The updated stuff. version of myself. Yep. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Um, of course, that's not what happened. I had to meet you. Had to. <laughs> I was, had to meet you. It was written you. in the books. Has to meet exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. Enough. I had to meet you. And uh, I guess I moved 
to Australia for um, to reunite with loved ones, which is another reason why people move abroad because uh, they met someone or their parents moved or they have family abroad mm. and they just want to be closer to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was definitely tricky initially to, uh, initially it was awesome. This like fun thing of like, Oh, I've got a, like a, a partner overseas. It's really good. And then you sort of come down to the, the guts of it. You're like, so who's moving first? Yeah. And that was a conversation that happened very quickly into our relationship. Yes. Well, add to. Yeah, to be fair. exactly. Like, because what's our future together? Like what, what's going to happen? Um, yeah, but this reason isn't the main reason why people move abroad. I would say that one of the main reasons why people move is because of work. So they have work opportunities elsewhere. Yeah. They want to either develop their skills or they have better opportunities elsewhere or all that stuff, um, which I guess wasn't the case for us at all. No. Not at all. No. We don't work in the field in that type of field like i'm i work in everything that is social work based i'm not a social worker but everything that has to do with humans and stuff so i guess there's not a lot of a the skills are mostly the same from canada to australia mm. i would say it's not like business stuff in my head but then again i don't know yeah that field and when it comes to you and work you're just like i just i just float exactly because yeah i haven't quite figured out what it is that i'm after mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. but i definitely have met people particularly here i guess because i'm going to like the immigration center mm -hmm. um for my language lessons a lot of people there are like they're the first of their family to come over but they're able to support their family back in their home country yeah so I can see that this work opportunity really provides a lot of yeah. financial backing for them. And hopefully, yeah. I, from what I understand, it's then to bring the family across, but they're trying yeah. to build a base here. Yeah. So. And exactly. And that's, again, another reason why people decide to move and it's to provide for their families because, and that's something that's something important to talk about because Moving abroad isn't always an easy decision in the no. sense that some people, they even if they don't want to, they have to for their own survival and the survival of their families. Yeah. And that's a reality that we don't talk about as much because I feel that moving abroad, the idea of it is really... Um, uh, how do you say it? It's really, hmm. I'm trying to think of like which line of thought you're going down to try and help, but like, are you saying like it's, it, it's like idolized or? Why it's, it's idolized. Thank you oh, very oh, much. Okay. Yeah. It's very idolized, but some people, they don't have a choice at all. I see what you're saying. You know? Yeah. And it's when, like, because right now we're living in, we're living in Canada in the province of Quebec and we don't live in the big centers like Montreal or Quebec City. We actually live on the 50th parallel. It's really far away, you know? It's very far away. And I was really surprised when I moved here how much diversity there was. And it wasn't necessarily by choice, but it was because they had to move from the Philippines or Morocco or any other countries really but they didn't pick Setil, which is the place we live in the quebecan government basically told them well you can't move into the big centers because there's too many people if you want your permanent residency or your citizenship you need to move in a remote area mm. yeah that's something i don't know very much about but it, yeah. it is becoming more prevalent particularly from the first time that we rocked up mm -hmm. Well, in, that I rocked up, like, in, yeah. what was it, 2020? In 2020, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, almost, like, 
there was almost little to none when it came to it. But now there's like wonderful like shops popping up, and mm -hmm. like grocery stores and things like that from anywhere from Africa to Asia. It's really cool. South like America as, as well. Yes, actually, I've met a lot. A of lot, companies. a lot, a lot of them. Yeah, um, and I'm sure maybe actually I think we would need to talk to them. But if they would have, if they had a real choice, would would have they picked Setsin? I don't know. That's a great question. You know, like I really don't know. So in your decision making in moving abroad, some people don't have the luxury of choosing their destination. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then another reason is for a change of climate. There is a definite change of climate. If you're used to being close to the equator and you come to the 50th parallel, there's a change of climate. Well, <laughs> change of climate. <laughs> I'm currently looking outside and it's like, I think there's about two feet, three feet of snow. Exactly. Just sitting there. Really different from Australia. And well, for me, that's a, it takes a big part in the reason why I want to move to us, move back to Australia. It's the weather, the climate. Of course, everything else is easy in Australia, government-wise. I it's my personal opinion, but the climate, as well. Oh my God, it has such an impact on your mood. Yes. Such an impact, and I mean, with the with the statistics, we know like there's way more um, alcoholic alcohol problems and depression and also suicides in the northern part of the planet because it's darker for a longer period of time it's super cold you can't do much outside if you don't have money and so it's really depressive and mm. you've lived it it's yeah. really really difficult so i'm sure if you really had the choice you wouldn't have picked Quebec. well I like the idea of picking Quebec because it's not necessarily just the climate mm -hmm. side of things. I mean, like almost anywhere in Canada this time of year, there's going to be snow. It's going to be cold. I mean, I th I'm pretty sure I heard some sort of thing in Alberta or something. Yeah. Where it got down to like minus 52. <laughs> and I'm like, that's stupid. That's, that's a, stupid. That's a stupid temperature to be at. <laughs> hmm. So I think regardless of where I wanted to go in Canada, because for me it was UK or Canada back in... 2018 in yeah. regards to travel and i think yeah the climate's awesome because you sort of idolize the idea as an australian like oh like actual snow mm -hmm. like wow it falls from the sky not out it doesn't get shot out of a machine cool <laughs> so yeah seeing seeing that it definitely gets quite like you feel like it feels quite magical seeing mm -hmm. the snowfall like yeah. every single time it's like snowed i've loved it but living here and then you know walking home from work and there's yeah. a bit of a snowstorm or you you're going to work and you have to de try and defrost the vehicle yeah scrape everything off the inside and the outside yeah yeah it's it sort of creates these new challenges that i had never really mm -hmm. experienced before so definitely and we have some friends in australia i'm thinking about flora and also laura they are not from australia they are from really warm countries, Dominican Republic, but also um, the Reunion Island. Mm. It's a French island close to Madagascar. And they wanted to move. And both of my friends, it was either Canada or Australia. But what made the decision process easier was definitely the climate. Yeah definitely and so that's why they picked australia over canada of course canada was easier because of the distance yeah it's closer to their countries uh, because laura is also lives in france as well but yeah they prefer doing 22 hours flights over living in cold climate yeah. half of the year to a sh short short-term pain for long-term gain kind of vibes yeah exactly yeah. exactly and i think yeah, and the last reason why before continue was to study. So people move abroad to study for bit better studying opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I'm I'm doing some online like tutoring with in mm -hmm. regards to to Cambly. Not a not a plug, but you know. Uh, We're not sponsored. <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> not we could Cambly if you listen to this. Maybe we can sponsor us. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, 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 an extra extra couple of percent on top of what I'm currently doing would be great. Yeah. But 
that aside, like a lot of the people that I am having conversations with on it, they are wanting to either move to Australia or to the UK、mm. or just simply want to keep up their, their English so that way they're able to, I guess, find, like one of the guys is definitely 100% looking to study.、Mm-hmm. And a study in like Australia. Okay. And so, this idea of moving to Australia, he wants to talk to an Australian first to、so、hear、mm-hmm. what the accent's like,、mm-hmm. see how difficult it is. And so far, he has a great grasp on, on English, but he's very excited about studying、yeah. in Australia. Yeah. And exactly. The only thing is, when it comes to, st- I've never really studied overseas, but it always seems way more expensive to study overseas. Which doesn't quite make sense if you're trying to invite people to come and enjoy your country. You make it way harder for them to do so. Exactly. Particularly from just anywhere. Yeah. Because I was looking at studying here, maybe, you know, like a couple of little things on the side. But aside from like my working permit, I'm looking at price tags and going, no, thank you, I'm good.、Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to I don't want to spend that much money just、exactly. to do the, something I could almost do for free in Australia. Yeah. Yeah,、so. definitely. I mean, we're. Cheap people as well. so We're very cheap people. So, studying abroad was definitely not the reason why we moved abroad. No,、yeah. I couldn't do it. Exactly. So, like, here you got like the seven main reasons why people want to move overseas. And I guess, yeah, the first step is trying to find a reason why you want to move because then I think it's going to define your goals and it's going to help you. Define the steps and the process toward, towards that goal. Okay.、Yeah. You know what I mean? And then once you've made your decision, you've picked the country, you need to deal with the visa. Yeah. Which is a pain in the ass. It's huge. It is a pain in the ass depending on which country you decide. Which country you're from, which country you're going、oh, to.、Uh, there's a lot of things regarding the visa. Definitely, definitely. We are lucky enough to have passports that are welcomed almost everywhere. I would, I mean, I don't know any place, not necessarily, but yeah, I would say so. Almost, like most of the countries, it's pretty easy. But I can't imagine the people that have、uh, passports from. Let's say, so one of my b o s s in Australia was from India, and she told me about the process that she had to go through、mm-hmm. for a partner visa, which, and which was the same visa that I was on. But the amount of stuff, of extra stuff she had to go through was insane, and just because she had an Indian passport. Could you provide, like, I already know what we did, obviously, for yours, but like, Was it like what was that like the extra cream on top or the extra part of the cake in regards to the other things she probably had to well, do? Well, well, if you can first, think of anything, yeah. Okay. Well, first, um, because India isn't necessarily an English speaking country, she had to translate every document, right? Yeah, yeah.、Okay. so that's not really because she. I mean, that, that can be from any country that doesn't speak English.、Yeah. But she had to translate every document. And it's really annoying because it needs to be <clears throat> an official translator from Australia and it might be、yeah. expensive. You need to find it. And it's just a really long process、um, to go through. Also, you need to.、Oh, I can't remember the other stuff exactly she had to go through, but past employment, I think. I, I really don't want to、uh, to say too many things. No, that's too、fine. many things. But just for <clears throat> easy, just for the tourist visa for a Canadian versus an Indian person, it's, it's completely different. It takes like, I don't know, like two months before going, the, having the,、uh, the approval of having your tourist visa. My parents had the approval in five minutes, you know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You so, like,、her. for the tourist visa,、uh, her parents or her partner's parents had to provide proof that they are employed in India. They,、okay. yeah, they had to provide、uh, the proof that they have enough money in their bank account to buy a ticket to go back to Australia. Okay. And other stuff like that. Just to prove that they're not going to stay. Yeah. It's 
mental. Yeah. Yeah. That's a polite way to put it. Yeah, no, I'm going to keep it to that because I had a sense you were going to build something Sunday more heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, so like, depending on where you come from, your immigration process is going to be completely different. Yeah. And if you're part of the Commonwealth and you want to move to a country in the Commonwealth, it's going to be easier. You know, um, yeah. What was your process to immigrate and to work into Wales? Uh, well, the UK side of things, because it was just a uh, working holiday visa for the UK, mm -hmm. so it could be any of the the countries within, mm -hmm. in the UK, which was perfect, because then, you know, you could sort of pick a place, move to another one, whatever. Um, but the process was quite long. I found it pretty expensive, like, particularly because I was only like, what, 22, 23? I can't really remember. Mm -hmm. But... I had to spend like seven hundred dollars. I had to get like biometrics, so I got seven hundred. Like, I'm pretty sure it was like six hundred and eighty eighty something. I was going to say eighty five, but what is Wales part of the Commonwealth? Oh, the UK, yeah. Okay. They they are the Commonwealth. They are the yeah, Commonwealth. Okay, okay, but yeah. they, they it stems from their branches out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, like so, it was expensive, and I think it was actually more than that to be fair, and. Then I had to I had to go for like a couple of appointments. I remember documentation got knocked because I didn't mm -hmm. have everything that I needed. Didn't fully understand the terminology in the yeah that like it's my only language, <laughs> and I still didn't get it. It was the most frustrating thing. Yeah, yeah. and and I found it very tricky because apparently they didn't have a printer on site. And I'm like, but I thought yeah, it wouldn't. There's a few things. Yeah, I'd forgotten stuff, but I said I can send it to you right mm -hmm. now. But like, mm -hmm. we don't have a printer. I'm like, how do you have paper here then? You've got a printer. That is like, tangent. Meditation. <laughs> but like, I had to get like everything from fingerprints. I'm pretty sure they scanned my eyes. Like, like I got like a full yeah. facial oh my God. Like, scan. Like it was pretty intense. Oh damn. So when I got to the UK, eventually, mm -hmm. there was about, I'm trying to think how many months of work it was to get there. It's like four to six months mm -hmm. of like, going through all the loopholes. Mind you, I wasn't exactly the, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I was, it was very clunky. So yeah. possibly from Australia, you could probably get in a much mm. less amount of time. Mm. Yeah. Great English, Hayden. Much less of a time. But yeah, so I think it was pretty tricky. It was very daunting because I had to go in a very specific building all by myself. Mm -hmm. it's, the people in there are nice enough, but it's, it, I don't know. They're they're always asking questions like, "Why do you want to go?" I was like, "I just want to have fun." I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, no, it's really uh, yeah. So like for yeah for you, it was pretty hard as well, even though like you're an English speaker mm. and stuff. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like like those sort of things. Like the visa stuff was tricky and mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. Australia to the UK. Yeah. So. No, it's never easy, and same for uh, your process to come to Canada and what's. <clears throat> a pain in the ass with Canada is when you move to Quebec, it's even like more complicated because we're reason. exactly because we are a French province. So like that was really complicated, but also some countries only do or states, they only do things via the mail, not even via email and stuff. Um, so you need look, the thing is, <laughs> if you want to move in one month and you're that type of person that when they take a decision it's like now or never it, i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work like that it's not going to happen in every country at all because it it's a long process it's a really really long process so you need you need to be patient sometimes not sometimes most of the time it just takes months to just gather all the information they need and you depend a lot on other organizations so when they need your police certificate when then you need to receive it by mail, but then it can take months, like one month, two months before it arrives. So it's a really, really long process. It's stressful because your goal is to get there, but because you depend on other authorities, you might not get approved. So it's really hard on the mind and it's really hard on the mental health because you're like, well, if I don't get approved, I'm kind of stuck here again. Yeah. And, and I need it's, its own 
yeah. like, mental battle. Yeah, because you need to redefine your goals then. You're like, oh, shit, I need to redefine redefine myself here. Yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the whole point. Exactly, leave. exactly. But then when you're approved, it's the most amazing sensation in the world. Yeah, right before mm. uh, there's this mad anxiety hit of like, okay, so what do I got to do now? And exactly, then you got like, to pack some stuff. I got to like... I gotta say goodbye to everybody. Uh, exactly, no. and book the flights. Pa yeah, book the flights first, and then it's the what do I bring with me? Yeah, and that part is also hard. You're like, ooh, am I going to just take a few clothes and make my like create a new wardrobe for me once I'm there? But you're like, oh shit! But it's it's more it's more money you know <laughs> yeah spending money on stuff spending money and what other than clothes what other things you're bringing well all the important documents and spoiler you're gonna forget stuff you're gonna forget a shit ton of things you're gonna be in your new country you're gonna be like oh crap i didn't think about that and then you're gonna depend on your family or friends to send it to you or to do scans or all that stuff yeah so i guess the best tip is for me i did went online and create list for me to check in to check sorry mm. okay i've got this i've got this i've got this but again you're gonna forget stuff um and also are you bringing like souvenirs from your place that is going to follow you yeah yeah it's really it's a long process as well because it means saying goodbye to material stuff that you might never see again or that you might see in one year two years yeah depending and you put everything in boxes and then you need to find a place to put those boxes so are you lucky enough to have your parents place and your and childhood story your well. childhood room <laughs> yeah. bedroom or are you renting a um, storage place do you have friends that can keep your boxes like th those are stuff you really need to think about yeah well i mean we went we went through stacks of stuff yeah before. Mm. like we got the we, we tried to nail it down to the barest of basics just before we left to come here mm -hmm. and then we basically donated i would say about half of our apartment mm, yeah. straight back to Vinny's. yeah all, like it wasn't too much of a hard process for us because everything every, every material things we had we got it almost for free on marketplace yeah so that was easy i guess the only big stuff we kept was the mattress and the bed frame because the mattress was really comfortable do we keep the bed frame yeah we kept the, the bed frame no yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I bought I know it. Where it is now. Yeah, it's the, basically the only thing I bought new from IKEA. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, 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 I'm on board now. Exactly, and yeah, that's that's a hard that's a hard process as well because you're like, oh, it's coming, and what's next after that is saying goodbye to your friends and family. Yeah, once you've got all your your gear sorted, your backpacks on your back. Well, just before that happens, I guess, before the airport. But mm -hmm. yeah, just sort of organizing, meeting up with as many people as possible, yeah. but really trying to value that time with loved ones. Exactly. A good thing to do would be a goodbye party with all your friends. <laughs> sometimes there's tears. Of course, sometimes there's tears because you don't know, most of the time you don't know how long you're going to leave. Mm. And you do get a lot of questions of like, so when are you back? It's like, well, I haven't left yet. So <laughs> like, yeah, true. I haven't figured true. that part out. The whole point was just yeah. to get out of the country. No, it's hard. And then saying goodbye to your family, if you're really close to your family, it's really hard mm. as well. Um, and as a partner to see you say goodbye to your family, I felt so guilty. You felt guilty. I I felt a lot of guilt. I was like, well, if he wasn't with me, he wouldn't have to say goodbye to his family. I already did it once, mate. No, I know. <laughs> but then I'm like, shit, I'm the one that is taking him from his family this time. Why? It's not really... It is consensual that you wanted to leave, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I do, I do. I just think you're overthinking it a little bit, but I understand. No, I'm not overthinking. Like that's it was my guilt 
Yeah. You know, I still I still feel guilt time to time, to be fair. But yeah. Thank How you. did you feel when you saw my mom cry so much before I left to Australia? It was more that I knew what it was like to be in your shoes. Yeah. yeah. And and being with someone that mm. like, you know, like saying not goodbye, but like catch you later, but I'll catch you later sometime. Yeah. Like a year or two. And just that that emotion that you feel is like you you have so many questions like what am i doing mm -hmm. why am i doing mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. like for crying out loud i'm making my parents like you know well, yeah you know, get teary or you know try and hold back the tears and give you a pat on the back and say like, you'll be right son <laughs> 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 you'll be right mate. you'll be right mate and then they go home they're like, mm -hmm. i don't know but yeah like i think i think when it came for you like i it was more like i understand what it's like yeah and I didn't necessarily, I didn't necessarily feel guilty for it, but it was more like the, not, not that there was like any, any pressure to bring you back in one piece, but like, mm -hmm. but it was, it was really, I don't know, like I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to put a finger on it because it felt. Did, did you feel a sense of, um protection you wanted to protect me for my parents not, not necessarily I, i'd see where i obviously i line myself up for that kind of question yeah. but um uh, not necessarily it was more like uh, like it's definitely not that like protection thing because you're very capable on your own yeah no i know so like and because i know that we both love traveling it was more like i understood this as one of the parts of moving mm -hmm. and i'm mm -hmm. not saying it's easy ever like i know that you know going back again to australia yeah and do it going through more or less the whole process again it's gonna yeah. be tricky but it is yeah i think it's one of those wonderful things where you know who really means stuff to you like that was one of the things that i found beautiful was when all like all my friends who were able to make it or if i'd been able to try and figure things out months in advance yeah particularly with the guys that live more Mm -hmm. rural and remote around uh, New South Wales, like, it made it easier mm -hmm. because I was able to actually at least have a goodbye with each person that meant something to Yes, me. of course. So, yes, obviously, I can, I can understand, like, the guilt, but, like, I, I understand it as part of that wonderful feeling of, like, I have support. Mm -hmm. So if this doesn't work, I know I can come back and I'm still loved. Like, of like, course, yeah. It's, it, mm. it was a lot more reassurance so for me seeing that your mum was like crying I was like well like she will always love you I'm not saying yeah, that your dad will not hopefully. <laughs> but um in the fact that he wasn't crying as much but like that idea that you have somewhere to be mm -hmm. if you really need it yeah like yeah. it's not, not, not not need to be you need to go mm -hmm. so like if you if you need it that's yeah that is one of those places you yeah, can yeah. go and like just to wrap things up I feel that <clears throat> taking the decision and Taking the decision up until leaving is a really difficult process emotionally yeah. and mentally, and it's okay. Like I highly encourage anyone to talk to friends and just be open about uh, their, uh, how they are feeling, because even though you are only yourself to leave, you are not alone in this. And if you have good friends they're gonna understand the reason why you're leaving they're not going to make you feel guilty about leaving them behind because you're and not that, leaving them behind no you're not you're not and i mean don't live your life for other people live your life for yourself even if it's hard and yes people are gonna call you selfish but then are they really worth it then if they can't see what moving abroad can bring you yeah you know because, I mean, everyone's trying to make their own way in life. And if you make a dif different decision to them, but you support them in their different decision, mm -hmm. and then they don't support you in their... It's influence. not... It's... Yeah, it's not reciprocal. Yes. <laughs> I had trouble with that one. Nicely done. I hesitated with it. It's not reciprocal, but yeah. Do... Make... <clears throat> make your own decisions for yourself. If you have the for... luxury of doing so. Like you were saying before, though, yeah. some people don't have that luxury. It just no, happens. of course, so. of course, yeah, definitely. And um, I, I mean, we acknowledge that not everyone has that luxury. Yeah. Either, um, but yeah. 
Oh yeah. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this, the first part, I guess, of uh, the subject. Of moving and living abroad. Yeah, exactly. So for the next episode, it's really going to be, okay, the first night <laughs> until, you know, whatever, get creating your routine and stuff. So stay updated um you can join us on our different social media so youtube tiktok instagram and facebook under the name of the upshot project so please subscribe and leave a comment like and <clears throat> all of the above thank you so much and before you go though we do have one little question mm -hmm. uh to lead into the next topic of living abroad what was it do you uh was it this one? okay yeah so the question is what's the biggest lie about moving abroad i'm so curious <laughs> i'm so curious to hear what other people have to say about yes this. we'll see we'll stay updated and we'll catch you in the next episode thanks guys bye